Hello and welcome to another episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today I'm going to attempt a makeover of this Matchbox Yesteryear model Y10 which represents the 1906 Rolls-Royce Silver Ghost and these models were issued in 1974. They came out in all sorts of different colours. I've seen them in silver, gold, green, metallic blue and yellow. Now stay till the end of this video because at the end I'm going to announce the winners of my number 60 Morris pickup truck giveaway where I'm going to give away three models that I restored last week. Now this has been bashed about a bit. Looks like someone stood on it and bent the windscreen flat. So I'm going to have to gently try and straighten that out without breaking it. That could be quite challenging. The interior is a bit grimy, dirty. The whole thing's a bit dirty actually. There's a tire missing off the front. Body's pretty straight. There's a few chips. This tire here has got a crack in it. So I'm going to have to try and find two tires to repair this model. Uh, basically it just needs to be stripped down and repainted. As usual underneath you can see this model is held together by a myriad of rivets. So as always to start with I'm going to remove the wheels using a cylindrical grindstone in my Dremel. As you probably know I use this to remove the burr on the end of the axle that stops the wheels from falling off. It's important to push with your left fingertip the axle end on the other side to give yourself maximum clearance on the side you're working on. Surprisingly simple and quick way of pulling these axles off. And what's good about it in this case I can reuse the axles when I put it back together. That was the rear axle and now for the front. All right, so far so good. Maybe this model won't be as hard as I thought. Now to remove the tyres, they're very old and I'm mindful that they can split or shatter when I take them off. So to try and minimise the risk, I'm going to heat them up in some boiling water and hopefully that will soften them up so I can take them off without damaging them. I've learnt from the past that these types of wheels on these yesteryear vehicles they're very difficult to get the tyres off because the wheel is slightly larger than the, the tyre and it sits inside a groove on the inside of the tyre and that's probably why most of these vehicles can still be found with the tyres intact because it's a real effort to take them off. Okay, three tires off and not one damaged. That's good. I'm happy with that. Now, just looking through my box of tires here, some spare parts I've got. I'm trying to find a suitable replacement for the two that are missing. I'm trying to find suitable replacements for the two that are missing. And I dig deep and try as I might, I cannot find any tyres that are an exact match. So I think I'm going to have to resort to robbing a couple of tyres off another yesteryear model. Now this one here was donated by De Vries Bert from Sittard in the Netherlands. And this is a Model J Denzenberg from the 1930s. So thank you De Vries Bert. Your model is coming in handy. And no doubt I shall get round to restoring it in the future. But for the time being I'm nicking these tyres. 
I'm just showing you here that the spare tire is quite badly damaged. So I'm going to rob another tire off of that model to replace this one. I forgot about that one. Anyway, time to split this model in half by drilling out these rivets. There's a few rivets on this model, they're more than normal. A total of seven. And there's two internal ones that hold the seats in. Uh, before I drill these rivets out, I want to be right dead on center if possible. This one's a little bit iffy on the front, so I'm using this spring-loaded center punch just to punch a hole in the middle of it to center the drill can make things a little bit easier rather than the drill wandering around and doing damage so I don't use hardly any pressure here just the weight of the drill basically the rivets are very soft and you can see they disappear real quick with a little bit of drilling I'm going to um, use an old technique when I put this back together. I'm going to drill out these posts and tap them with a thread and screw the base back on with some little screws I've got. There, that came apart quite easily. So looking at this now, that's, uh, that's hot. that middle rivet there is actually holding this whole windscreen assembly in comes complete with a couple of lights on the front and the steering wheel. It's actually quite badly bent and one side of the frame is actually broken which I didn't realize until now so I'm gonna to have to be very very careful when trying to straighten that that I don't break it off altogether. Now those seats as I said before are held in by two plastic rivets so I make short work of those same drill again, literally they just fall out once you remove that little bit of plastic that's holding them in. Now there's just this handbrake lever on the side and also that holds the spare tyre on. I've got to take that off. This tyre's going in the bin unfortunately. You can see why it's split because it's held in three places by that metal piece on the side of the car. And all three points where that metal holds it uh, are sort of starting to split. The front headlight part here, it's in two parts. There's a radiator grill, which is plastic. I'm going to try and push out those plastic rivets from the rear using this scriber. It's very fiddly. takes me a couple of attempts because I can't really see what I'm doing. As you can see, even with this magnified view, you probably can't see what I'm trying to do either. So imagine what it's like with me, uh, the old Mark 1 eyeball. Very difficult to see in there. Now that's an interesting rivet. Look at that, how it's splayed on the end. Well, that's got to go. Otherwise, I won't have any chance of taking this front end off. So I'm using this shallow cut drill here that I've modified. I've changed the angle of the tip, made it so it doesn't dig in quite as deep or as fast. And it means that you can very carefully go to the correct depth when you're trying to pull things apart without doing any damage. And that flew off pretty quick. Luckily, it landed right in front of me and I didn't have to hunt for it. Notice I'm keeping all the parts in that plastic bin there so I don't lose anything. Very important when you've got a model like this that's made of multiple parts. Now the plan was I was going to use that little Dremel tool there to grind off the end of this uh, handbrake assembly. But I didn't have to, it literally fell out on its own accord. Now how come that wasn't lost in the past I don't know. Now these metal running boards here have got to come off because I can't be painting over the top of them. So I am going to find a use for that little ball attachment. It's a little grinding ball on the end there. I'm just going to take away 
the end of these rivets and make it a little bit easier just to prise these running boards off of the model. Using this nifty little tool that somebody sent me, it's meant for splitting mobile phones, but it's great for separating close fitting pieces like this. I did bend it very, very slightly, but I straightened it out again. So that should go straight back on afterwards. My plan is to clean these up because they are supposed to be plated metal on the real model. They look pretty grotty at the moment. I'm going to chuck them in my ultrasonic cleaner and hopefully give them a bit of a clean up. The colour of this model is rather unusual. It's a metallic dark pink. Uh, the closest I could find in the hobby shop was this magenta by Vallejo. Uh, here it doesn't quite look the right, but that is very dark paint. I noticed the rest of the paint is a little bit lighter, probably because it's been exposed to sunlight over its life. So if I try a little bit on the front there, you can see it's closer to the original colour than I thought. I might just put a drop of red in there to darken it up a little bit. And this isn't metallic, so I'm going to be doing a top coat of this pearl clear lacquer from Tamiya which has loads of little sparkly stardust in it and hopefully it will make it look like metallic paint. As for the base that is a very light cream colour it's not white it's creamy so I'm going to mix the X2 and some of this Grey green number 76 from the Tamiya range. I know one is flat and the other one is gloss, but I'm going to put some top coat on it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And these are compatible, these paints. It only takes a couple of drops of the darker colour in that white just to turn it very quickly into an off white. Not quite the same. I sense there's a hint of yellow in there. I've got to buy some more yellow. Look, I'm nearly out. So I just put one drop of that in on top of the green, grey green. I'm very, very pleased that this colour is very, very close to the original colour. And it only took me a couple of minutes to make it up, which is great. Sometimes I struggle for, for many, many minutes, like sometimes half an hour to get it right and waste a lot of paint. But here I didn't waste any, which is fantastic. I'm now going to put this paint that I've made in an old Tamiya jar that I've preserved. I kept it and cleaned it out and I'm in the habit now of doing this. Uh, any paint that I make that you can't get off the shelf, I'm now keeping it in case I need it in the future. And it stays fresh in these pots for, I'm guessing, as long as you like. Add a, add a little shot of thinners there to make it a little bit runny for the air gun, but also just to keep it fluid whilst I store it. And I mark on it what model it's for, the Y10. That way I'll remember in the future. So that's the paint mixed up. Now it's time to strip this model. Take all the old paint off. I'm using a glove here because I don't want to get this paint stripper on my hands. And as you can see I've got it in a little sauce bottle. and Because it's got a nozzle on it, it's a very economical way of spreading it on the model. You don't waste as much as you would by just tipping it in the bath, which is what I used to do for a couple of years. And then some subscribers said, why don't you put it in a sauce bottle? And originally I thought, well, I reckon the sauce bottle would just melt. So I did a test and it seems to work quite well. I'll let you know how it goes. If the sauce bottle ever melts, I'll let you know. But for the time being, it suits my purposes. The cream paint seems to be affected very, very quickly by the paint stripper. The pink base, not quite as quick, it takes a little bit time before that metallic paint softens up. 
So eventually it's soft enough just to basically brush it off with a pink toothbrush. And when I've got the majority of it off, I rinse it off in the sink and see if there's anything left behind. And if there is, I'll pick it off with a couple of toothpicks or some uh, metal dental tools that I've got. Also use wire brush and some bronze wool. And this is what it looks like prior to undercoating. Came up not too bad. No major flaws in this, even though it's been abused, I guess, over its years. Overall, it's kept its shape quite well. So I'm going to undercoat this now with the Tamiya Fine Grey Primer. Now when these are primed, you can see all the details suddenly pop. Look at those rivets on the bonnet of this motor. I do like the way the rivets on the front and the rear of the engine panel there are formed in a zigzag pattern. The driver's door is only half a door. Can you see that with a little latch on it? Passenger door is full size. On the rear, it looks like there's a little boot, maybe some under seat storage area there. Here's a shot of the front end. Not much to see there. On the base, there's some nice details. I do like the highly detailed spring leaves on the back and front. There's also a couple of catches here. Maybe that's where they kept the wheel change kit in like a little toolbox underneath the running board. On the rear, there's another leaf spring that runs left to right. I've never seen that before. And there's a rear light, looks like a lantern off of an old carriage. Right, it's paint time. Now this is where I drop the ball. I must confess this restoration took place over a number of days and I had a lot going on in my life and sometimes I tend to drop the ball and this is one of those occasions. Some of you may or may not realize and I certainly didn't realize until at the very very end when I put it back together and looked at the comparison between the before and after shots but I've actually painted the body the wrong color this should be the cream colour and the base should be the pink colour. I don't know what I was thinking. Well, I wasn't thinking at all, actually. Now, I noticed this Vallejo paint goes on really quite dusty, like a powder coat almost. I mean, it's a beautiful finish. It's dull, dull as you can get. But yeah, it reminds me of powder coating. It's so smooth. Shame it's the wrong colour. Still, never mind, it's going to turn out to be a beautiful looking model in the end, regardless. This is another error I made. I forgot to drill out the rivet posts and tap them prior to painting. It's always a good idea to do this before you paint it because there's a good chance that you might scratch the paint or chip it off. But I had no choice, so I had to continue with the plans. Here's a close up of a cutting a thread cutter, commonly called a tap, and here's those little screws I was talking about. They're 2M button headed Allen screws. And I've also got a third one to put the windscreen assembly back in with. And there's a close up of the hole, beautifully centered, even though I do say so myself. And now I'm using the hand chuck just to screw that tap into the hole and cut a thread to accept the M2 screws. And that's what the thread looks like after you've struck it with the, the tap. Now I'll put these screws in out of habit because I normally do this before I paint it and I don't want the hole to fill up with paint. But of course, I've done it all uh, back to front today. Never mind. I guess you could say we all make mistakes. Right, all these metal bits here are going into my ultrasonic cleaner. See what that can do. 
it'll either make them look really, really good or really, really bad, or perhaps won't have any effect whatsoever. Let us see, I put it on for 10 minutes. And whilst they're cooking in there, I'm going to get Kevin to give myself a haircut. I haven't got much there, but I do like the, the shaved look. Because we're in lockdown, I've asked Kevin if he will do it for me, and he's agreed. It's very difficult to do it myself. I can't see around the back very well. Ooh, I wish he, uh, maybe he should have picked a, a new razor. That, that's grabbing a bit. Ooh, still, he's, I guess he's trying his best. Good on him for trying, I say, and he is helping me out. So after my hair cut, this is what the bits look like out of the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, not too flash, I guess you could say. I think the plating is long gone on these parts. Um, but uh, Never one to give up. I do try some of this metal polish and a little buffing wheel on my Dremel to see if it has any effect whatsoever. Initially I thought, oh, it's actually working, but all it does is highlight the areas where the plating is missing and the running boards are worn. Or just maybe over time, perhaps, the, the plate is just uh, corroded to some degree and it doesn't look particularly flash. So I've decided what I'm going to do, I'm going to spray them gold eventually. This windscreen assembly, I'm going to have a, a, an attempt at straightening it. Now I know it can really turn bad if you heat these things up too much with that little blue flame. They can just bubble and melt away. I was lucky today by keeping it moving and taking my time. I managed to heat it up just the right amount to make that metal soft. And with those little hobby pliers, I've managed to bend it back into position. It's just this issue of this broken uh, A-pillar here, whatever you call it, the windscreen frame. So what I'm going to do is I've aligned it up as perfectly as I can. And I'm going to try to fix it with this Starbond thick gap filling super glue. So it's kind of a little bit gelatinous, this stuff. It's not as runny as your standard super glue is and so I've just glued it there and um, whilst I'm looking at it I see here's a piece of plating that's coming off so you can see there is no hope for these parts they will never look shiny again by polishing so as I said before I'm going to give them a quick bath in the methylated spirits because they are a little bit oily from that cleaning solution in the ultrasonic bath And once they're free of any grease or grime, I'm going to paint them with this Tamiya Gold Spray Paint TS21. Never used it before, so this is a first for me. Instantaneously, I am absolutely wrapped with the results. It has hidden a multitude of sins and made these parts look virtually brand new. So an excellent product from Tamiya. I must say I have no affiliation with Tamiya paints whatsoever. However, I do speak very highly of their products from time to time because for the, for the simple reason they do the job they're supposed to do. They are a bit pricey, but look at that. Beautiful coverage. Put those up on those magnetic clamps there to dry. And take a break, have a cup of coffee, and get back into it again. All right, I'm now going to paint the base with my home mixed paint. Of course, it should be pink, but we can keep it our little secret. It'll still look good in the cupboard when it's finished and no one will know that if anyone sees it in the future they'll probably think it was a limited edition where 
Matchbox swap the colours over for something different. I mean, I have seen them do that on other models before. So it's not out of the realms of possibility. Well, I've touched up the pink body where I scratched it by manhandling it, drilling the holes in the base and all that. And I'm now going to try this Tamiya lacquer, the pearl lacquer. You can see it's got all sparkly bits in there. It's like very, very fine metallic dust, I suppose. I don't know where you get that from or how you manufacture it. But somebody did and it actually goes, doesn't block up the spray nozzle at all. It goes straight through. And this reminds me of a Barbie doll car for some reason. It's just the sort of thing a Barbie could be driving around in. I think with that glittery pink on there. It's a beautiful colour. And the lacquer has gone on just superbly. It looks extremely shiny and smooth. Now the other bits of kit, just clean the seats and polish up the axles. And I mustn't forget the steering wheel and the front grille. I give them all a bit of a clean. The wheel hubs I spray with some aluminium paint from a pressure pack that I had in the shed. They turned out lovely. For the tyres, I thought I might try something different. They're still a little bit brittle and old. I thought I might try some of this trim and plastic restorer that uh, supposedly turns everything jet black again. It's a car product that I had in the shed. Just thought I'd give it a go for something different. Applying it with the cotton bud and letting it soak in. I'm hoping that it will rejuvenate the tyres and add a few years to their life. Maybe make them a little bit supple also, if it actually does what it's supposed to do. If it penetrates the rubber, who knows? Right, here's all the bits that are ready to go back together. There are 22 parts on this model, and I must admit that this model has taken me a very, very long time to pull apart prepare and paint and get to this stage. I don't know how some of the modelers punch out a video a day because for me to do that is absolutely impossible. This one here is particularly intricate in its design and assembly. And I, I challenge anyone to do one of these in one day. I would like to see that. Still, you know what they say, good things are worth waiting for. Well, let's hope that this is one of those things. I had to wrap my mind around how this thing goes back together because I, I couldn't really remember the, the order in which I pulled it apart. Anyway, using the Starbond glue again, just a little tiny drop on a toothpick there. I'm going to place one drop in the center of the two holes on the, the running board area there just to secure these in. They do snap in, but I felt a little bit of extra grip could be warranted. I didn't want them falling out in a few years' time if uh, the model's ever handled. They sit back on there very nice. I managed to straighten them out too, so there's no gaps. The front grille, that clips on pretty hard too. Uh, I thought, mm, I might, might get away with that, but I, I tried pulling on it and yeah, it, it can come off. So I thought, well, in for a penny, in for a pound, I'll put another little drop of glue on there just to hold it in position. You see, I can't really re uh, reform the rivets without damaging the paintwork. So sometimes you have to resort to using a little bit of super glue. The grill, got two pegs on the back that go in those little holes. Now this will never come out again. I use two drops there. fits in very snug. I like it. 
get a great feeling when something clicks into place. All right, this little gizmo on the side. It's like a multi-purpose thing that holds the spare wheels and it's got the handbrake on it from what I can tell. Maybe even another lever. Is there two? I think there's two levers on that. I'm not too knowledgeable about old cars. I'm sure somebody out there knows what those levers are for. Maybe front and rear brakes? I'm not sure. I'm guessing. I'll just prop that there whilst the glue sits. It doesn't want to stay up, so... Oops, just put those spring-loaded tweezers in there. That'll hold that. So a couple of um, instruments on that dashboard that I hadn't noticed when I was pulling it apart. Like a speedometer and a, like a, a reservoir of some fluid. I do love that Tamiya gold paint. This model is just looking beautiful. I'm getting excited as I'm putting it back together. I'm thinking I've created something here. And I have. I've created a completely new model. <laughs> So much for Marty's makeovers. Anyway, it's going to look good regardless. Gold screw looks nice in the bottom. I usually colour match the screws because I, uh, I, I paint the model after I fit the screws. And in this case I didn't, so the screws underneath the front and the back ones are black. I might get round to painting them pink one day just to finish the model off. And one last thing is to use the axle reforming system to put the wheels back on the model. As you probably are aware, it's a drill press with a nail punch in the chuck. The nail punch has a concave hole on the end of it. And as I press down and it spins, it burrs the end of the axle over and keeps the wheels on. So that was one, now this is the second one. And the end of the axle looks quite original. A couple of tiny little chips on there that I touch up before I go to the grand reveal. And I'm adding a little bit of spice to this one. I'm going to paint the headlights with this chrome paint or chrome ink because I didn't like the look of the gold ones and I thought they deserved to be silver. So the original ones didn't come out with the silver headlights but then again they didn't come out with the pink body either. So there's no harm in occasionally doing your own thing. Whatever makes you feel good and this model makes me feel good. So here's a reminder of what it looked like. I cannot remember where I got it from. Probably somebody generously donated it before I used to keep records. However, this model needed some love. You cannot have a Rolls Royce that looks like this. So something had to be done. So this is what it looks like now. It looks just like something out of Barbie's garage with its beautiful glittery pink body the cream base, the chrome and gold highlights, and those rejuvenated tyres and wheels. This thing looks a million dollars. It actually looks like what a Rolls Royce should look like. It's a thing of beauty and something that everybody would want if it was a real car in the real world. Here's a few shots I took of close-ups for your visual pleasure. Please stick around because after this video I'm going to go straight into picking the three winning comments in regards to the comma pickup truck giveaway that was announced last week. So good luck everybody. Okay, well thanks for sticking around. 
Uh, I'm going to do the YouTube draw now to pick the winner of the little comma pickup vans that I did the other week. I've got three to give away and so far there are 1419 comments with the word winner in it. So hopefully I'm going to pick you. So stand by, here we go. <clears throat> so start, ready? The first winner is going to be uh, Javid Mir. Javid Mir. Second one. Second winner for the blue comma pickup van is Artist Man 007. I'll write that down. And the last winner today is, drum roll please, fingers crossed people, it's Matt O. Matt O. So there you go. I hope you're all watching, you three. We are talking to Javid Mir, Artist Man 007, and Matt O. If you are there, if you can hear me speaking, please send me an email with your address and I will mail those uh, models out to you. And well done, congratulations. Uh, just before I go, one last thing. I've got to make an honourable mention for a YouTuber who left a, a comment which I found to be particularly good and is worthy of mention. It comes from John Williams and I'll read it to you. While watching YouTube after dinner, my young lad was such a big grinner. He gave me a hoy. I said, what's up, my boy? He said, Marty is back. What a winner. <laughs> so, John, you got an honourable mention. At least that's something. Okay, so goodbye.